Hello, everyone. It's so good to be back and um, to be doing another missionary. Mrs. DeWalt had to really think through um, what missionary she was going to choose. Um, so I mean, we just finished Hudson Taylor and what an amazing life Hudson Taylor lived. And, and we saw the amazing things that God did and how we can trust him, that we can trust God to take care of us. I mean, Hudson Taylor many times had to just trust God to provide the money that he needed. And so because we did a man, I decided that we're going to do a girl, uh, but boys don't let that, oh, don't say, oh, it's a girl, but she does some amazing things and I think you'll really think it's interesting. Now, I have told you a tiny little bit of this missionary story before. Um, so if you remember it, you might this first lesson remember some of it. I'm going to try to give you a couple more details that I didn't give you before, so still make sure you listen because uh, you might learn something new about her that you didn't know before. But I would definitely say this one is um, very close to my heart. It's probably one of my favorites, and um, I will tell you the reason why she's one of my favorites um, near the end of this part of her story. Um, so our missionary's name is Amy Carmichael. And Amy Carmichael has an amazing life that she, she did some amazing things. God really, really used her. And so we're going to get started and we're going to start learning about Amy Carmichael and where she goes to be a missionary. Well, when Amy was born, she was born right before Christmas. So she had her birthday right next to Christmas. And she was the oldest of seven children, and they lived in Ireland. Um, Hudson Taylor was from England, and Amy Carmichael's from Ireland. And this, she was born in about the 1800s, okay? And so this was, this was a long time ago <laughs> that she was born. Um, but she was the oldest of seven, and they lived near the seashore. They lived near a beach, basically. And Amy loved growing up near the beach. She loved the sea. She loved hearing the waves, and she absolutely loved being near the sea. Well, she, like we said, she had a big family, but also from the time she was a very little girl, her family knew about Jesus. They did, and they went to church every Sunday. They had their family Bible time every night. And so Amy grew up knowing so much about Jesus. And so at a very early age, Amy knew what Jesus had done for her. And she also knew things like God answers prayer. She'd always heard that. She had heard that in church. Her mommy had said that. Maybe they had been praying for something and God answered. And her mom would say, oh, you know, Amy, God answers prayer. But Amy knew that God answered prayer. And there was something that Amy really, really wanted. She wanted blue eyes. She desperately wanted blue eyes. She loved the color blue. It was like the sea. And remember, she loved living near the sea. And her mom had blue eyes. And she just wanted blue eyes so bad. But God had given her brown eyes. And she desperately wanted those blue eyes. And so when Amy was three years old, one night before she went to bed, she got down on her knees next to her little bed and she prayed to God, okay? So just imagine, three years old, this is Mackenzie. Most of you know Mackenzie, Mackenzie is three. So little Mackenzie, when you think of Amy Carmichael, just think of a little girl, she's bending down by her little bed and she's praying, she's like, God, I would like blue eyes. And my mommy tells me that you answer prayer. And so I am going to pray that you give me blue eyes and I know you'll do it. And Amy climbed into that little bed and she was so excited because she knew she was going to wake up in the morning and she was going to have beautiful blue eyes because God answers. God answers your prayers. She'd always heard that. And so sure enough, she goes to sleep and she wakes up the next morning and she's so excited. She's running over to the dresser and she looks in the mirror that's on the dresser. And she's like, I'm gonna see blue eyes, I'm gonna see blue eyes. And then she looked and her eyes were still brown. She still had her brown eyes and she starts to cry. And she's like, God didn't answer me. God didn't even listen to me. God doesn't 
answer. Mommy said that God answers, but, but he didn't. And then Amy started to think, well, isn't no an answer? When she would ask her mommy for something, maybe she asked her mommy for a cookie or something, if her mommy said no, was that an answer? Yeah. And if she went and she asked her daddy for something and her daddy said no, wasn't that an answer? So this little girl at three years old thought, oh, you know what? God did answer me. He said no. God did answer me. And right there, that was such an important lesson for little Amy to learn, is that God does answer her. And yes, no is an answer. <laughs> and sometimes that's hard. And so at this age, Amy didn't know why God said no. But she would discover the reason that God made her with brown eyes. Because, you know, God has made each one of you. God knows how many hairs are on your head. And so God made you. And he gave you. He gave you the color of your hair. He gave you the color of your eyes. He did all of that. And for Amy Carmichael, there was a very important reason that she had brown eyes. Now we're going to kind of jump a lot of the story for at least this first one. We're gonna kinda of jump now to where she's older because Amy doesn't learn why she has brown eyes until she is 28 years old. She, <laughs> from three to 28, 25 years have passed until Amy finally learns why God said no to her wanting blue eyes all those years ago. Now, Amy, at first she was a missionary to Japan. She went to Japan. She went to Japan for three years, which we'll get into that. We'll talk a little bit about that later. And then she came back to Ireland, and then she goes to India. Now, in India, there was a lot of secrets. Missionaries were trying so hard to reach the Indian people. And these people in India, they, they did not want to share much with missionaries. And when missionaries don't know much about what the Indian people are like or their cultures, it can be hard for them to reach the Indian people. Because if the Indian people feel like, um, if there's a specific rule, like if, if you can only walk through this door at a certain time, or um, you can only use a certain hand, and the missionaries start to do things and they start to disobey what the Indian people think and are in are ingrained with there's this is the rules that we do <gasps> that missionary just disobeyed the rules and then they don't listen to the missionary so the missionaries have to learn a lot about the people that they are going to go and be missionaries to and so the in, they were trying to figure out the Indian people who did the Indian people worship they didn't even know who they worshiped what the name of their false god was they knew nothing and so many of the missionaries had tried to figure it out, but the Indian people would not let anybody into their temples. Their temples were these big stone buildings with gates and big, huge doors in front of, and they wouldn't let any, any foreigner in. A foreigner is someone that's not from your country. And so they wouldn't let anyone in. Well, Amy was determined. Amy was so determined to figure out who are they worshiping? And we need to know this stuff so that we can tell them about Jesus. And so she started to experiment. And she figured out that she could take coffee and she could stain her skin with the coffee. And she looked just like an Indian woman. And she was able to dress just like an Indian woman. And she looked just like an Indian woman. Now, I'm not saying go and get your mommy's and daddy's coffees and try this, but this is what Amy did. <laughs> Amy dyed her skin with the coffee until it was brown. And so then she was able to walk among the Indian people and everyone thought she was an Indian woman. And she had learned the language so she was able to speak the language. And so they thought she was an Indian woman. And one of the missionary friends of Amy while she was over there said, Amy, if this is amazing that you can look like an Indian woman. You know, it's a really good thing that you have brown eyes. And Amy kind of just looked at her. What, what do you mean by that? Well, if you had had blue eyes or any other kind of eye, 
you would never get away with being an Indian person because an Indian person has brown skin and brown eyes. And if you had had different colored eyes, you wouldn't be able to go among the Indian people and look like an Indian woman. And so at that moment, Amy realized, well, all those years ago, I asked for blue eyes and God made me have brown eyes so that I could look like an Indian woman and reach these Indian people. And so sure enough, she was able to go into the temples, the Indian temples, and to see who they worshiped. And when she got inside the temple, it was sad. It was dark and you could barely see and it was cobwebs and it looked gross and there was this big idol on this altar and and Amy says it was black and it was sticky. There was stuff like dripping all over it and it was scary. And Amy thought, if this is their gods, they're, they're serving these terrifying gods, we need to tell them about a God of love because our Jesus is not this kind of God and he's the only God and he's a God of love. So we need to tell them about God's love because this is the only idol. This idol is, is scary. Well, while she was there, there were these little boys that came out of the corner. They had just been sitting all huddled in a corner. And Amy thought, what are, what are those boys doing here in this temple? Why are they just sitting on the floor? And a man hurried them away. And Amy thought, well, what is that? And then Amy came out and there was a parade going on. Big floats. And these big floats had flowers all over them. And so Amy asked what was going on, and this was a parade for their God. And Amy looks on the float, and there are all these little girls. There are about 10 little girls from the age of 8 to 11. And then she noticed that some were even younger. There were some 4-year-olds on there. And Amy thought, well, where are all those children going? You know, and, and she just kept looking at those little children and remembering the little boy she saw, and she thought, what, well, what are they doing? And this float went right into the temple, and then the doors closed. And Amy later figured out that this, this temple and, and the God they worshipped, they would give away their children to the God, to this fake God. And these children would get locked up inside the temple and have to serve the priests or have to just sit in this temple. And some of these little girls, they were saying they were marrying it, that they were marrying the idol. They were marrying their little, little girls to this wicked idol who couldn't do anything and was just sitting there. And so these children were being captured and taken into this temple and having to be slaves and servants. And Amy just thought, oh, this is not what God would want. This is not, Jesus loves the little children. There has, to, there has to be something we can do about these little children. Because this, this is not how we treat little children. We don't sell them into slavery. This is not what God would want. And so we're going to find out next week what Amy, what God, basically God gives Amy a plan on how to help these little children who are being basically sold into the temple, being pulled away from their mommies and daddies. And Amy even recalls when she saw that float, those children were terrified. They were so scared. So I think the biggest thing that I want you to take away is that God always answers prayer. He does hear you. It might be a no, and that's hard. But when it is a no, you can know that God has a plan for it. Because for Amy, yeah, it might be silly that she asked for blue eyes, right? Like you kind of think, well, God's not going to change your eye color. But at the same time, God could. But God told her no. Because God gave her those brown eyes for a very, very specific reason. So I want you to remember that no matter what, God does hear your prayers. And I don't know why sometimes it's a no, 
but your God does. And your God has a great plan for you. And he hears you and he listens to you. Now I told you that I would tell you why this is part of my favorite story. And you probably remember, um, but Mrs. DeWalt has red hair and nobody else in my family has red hair. There is, that, that's my sister up there. <laughs> and she's got brown hair, very dark brown hair. And um, I don't think I have any other pictures. <laughs> I'm looking at the pictures in the back of the wall. But my brothers have, my one brother has blonde hair and the other brother has brown hair. And my parents don't have red hair. None of my cousins have red hair. Nobody had red hair. And so I just had this red hair. And you now, somewhere down in my line, a great, 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 grandma had red hair <laughs> okay so that's where we think I got it <laughs> but when I was growing up it was hard there's not a lot of redheads and I didn't want my red hair and I did ask God just like Amy Carmichael if God would change my hair and God did now I don't know why I still have red hair <laughs> but I do know this that God has made each one of us special and I have red hair, and that's not something that a lot of people have. And so I'm, I'm happy that God gave me red hair. But when I was a little kid, I remember not wanting something on my body, which was my hair. <laughs> and sometimes we feel that way. Maybe we want curly hair, or maybe we want straight hair, or maybe you even want a different eye color. But you know, God has made us just the way we are for a very, very important reason. And so Amy Carmichael taught me that, that my red hair is okay, and I like my red hair, and I'm glad that God gave me red hair. And so I just want you to know that God does hear you, and he does listen to you, and he loves you, and he made you, and you're special. All right, well, you all take care, and we will see you next Wednesday for the next part of Amy Carmichael's life. Bye.